fame, I'm sure, affected us, I think. I know I had people telling me, like, you're the guy, you're the guy who keeps this band together. You know, I'm sure Slash had guys telling him, you're the reason, you know, and Axel too, all of us. I probably didn't deal with it great at first. I was probably an asshole. I'm sure I had growing pains going through that thing. And I bought a Corvette, which is an American car. For, for me and my family, that's like the fanciest car you could ever want to get. And my brother John came down and he said, oh really, this is how you're going to roll. You're just going to spend all your money on cars and McKagan's just don't live above their meaning, means. And so it's just a lesson my, my mom taught us all, showed us all. In the first uh, panic attack I got, I was 17. They do run in my family. I think the alcohol was self-medication for that, for sure. But then when I got to a point of drinking so much that I needed alcohol to not shake, um, I would get panic attacks. It turned into a, a brutal stew of panic, I suppose. There was a few times I found myself in some pretty dark situations. There was, yeah, the instance with, with the gun in the closet. and. I, I didn't know how to get out of my addiction. You know, sort of childhood and teenage uh, myths about having a perfect marriage and a white picket fence and having kids and all these things, this life I had dreamed and hoped for just seemed completely shattered. That's when I really started to give up hope for myself. Giving up hope on yourself will put you in a dark place, I came to find out. On May 10th, 1994, in my house in Seattle, Washington, I got acute pancreatitis. That was the beginning of my new life. I actually had um, a couple moments in the hospital. There was that thing that you hear people talk about, seeing yourself from above the bed. I saw that thing. And my mom coming in, she had Parkinson's by this point, and in a wheelchair. I'm the youngest, and I had the tubes running in and out of me. And, and I, and I realized right then and there that the, the order of things were completely wrong. And my family had tried an intervention on me, but uh, it just didn't work. I wasn't ready for that, and uh, to be quite honest. But now here I was in a hospital, and the doctor's telling me, um, if you drink, you will die. Um, I got through the shakes, and I got through that first sort of eight days. It was almost a gentle rehab. So it was the first time I didn't have the shakes for a while. I'd quit cocaine um, before this thing, but I knew um, I'd been given another chance. I had to come back to L.A. Guns were meant to make it a new record, so I went back down and I got a new mountain bike. I started reading books and like riding bike, entering bike races, hanging out at the bike shop. Then I met Sensei Benny soon after that, Benny, and, and that's really when the, um, the work on myself began. He's been, just really taught, taught me how to live again. So that's what was happening to me. And um, I, met, I met the girl who, like, really, all those things I thought that I was in the dark corner with the shotgun in my closet. I wasn't expecting that ever again in my life. I really wasn't. A kid's sort of imagination running wild. And um, we met and we have not been apart since we met 14 years ago.